the presentation will be cut on each line because I have a much bigger screen than this one. I'm here to present you a quite simple and enjoyable way to write end-to-end -end testing uh, tests for every web application. Um, what I call end-to-end -end testing is an interaction as close as possible as um, the user's one, starting from the web, the web browser through all the layers of an application and checking back the results in the browser. Um, first, I didn't present myself. Uh, I am Simon de Carpentry, computer science engineer. I have other degrees. I'm working in two companies, Soap in Space, which is an e-democracy company making debates online and comment for, uh, the comment for some software, comment.org or .com. And acuro.com, which um, is another computer company making uh, load, uh, load tests, stress tests for websites and also end-to-end -end testing, so, and developing uh, developing services on the web with free softwares for bank, post, and things like this. Uh, I am also a free software enthusiast and um, free software freedom of speech and net neutrality advocate for many years. Uh, I am treasurer of mm, French Data Network. FDN, uh, which is an associative um, internet provider in France, existing since 1992. Uh, the Net Neutrality Defense Fund, I'm also treasurer of this organism, which is collecting money for La Quadrature du Net en France, Wikileaks, uh, and other non-profit organizations um, advocating freedom of speech and net neutrality. Uh, honorary member of Framasoft, who get a prize yesterday, and vice president of the Linux user group Pinux, for instance. Okay, so this is quickly the steps we'll, we are going through. If it's horrible, you can leave now, <laughs> else we are going. As I said, the aim is to use a regular web browser to make the test of a website, a web service, or everything reachable with uh, HTTP, in order to test the thing as close as possible as the normal users, uh, which would be the exact contrary of unitary testing, uh, consisting in testing its, each function uh, one by one, unitary testing, and which is not proving that every small piece is working right are making a big puzzle um, functional. With end-to-end -end testing, maybe one function is not working, but we'll be testing that the website just appear, and when you click on login, it works, and so on, until the level of detail you want you can make 10,000 tests or more testing each tiny pieces. The, the titles are great and with the correct SS, uh, CSS class uh, and the background appears okay. Not only what works, but how it looks. You can check everything, everything that a browser can show to you, the users. So making it, uh, I thought that it was interesting, this new way of test, we had some application case with some customers uh, at Sopin Space, and um, in fact, it appears that it's uh, not a common way of making tests. Um, 
speaking with some friends, uh, they said, I would like to have this functionality for my uh, information system or uh, for the product I'm making. And that's why, as I found it simple and enjoyable, that's why I'm here to present it for you. So, here you have what you still have to write when everything works. We have a first line here called suit with a string, which is the name, the description of what will be in this box. And, us, uh, and you will be writing tests in JavaScript, in many files, and in many suit of tests, many block. So this is the name of my current block. Here there is an anonym, anonymal, anonymous function, which will be ended uh, somewhere here. And what you should see after this in the suite block is one line test page, a function call with two arguments. And only this. So it's going from here until this uh, column, semicolon, but it should be just one line. In, in the test I, I write, it's one line, one test. And here, I'm testing that this URL is loading in the browser and that the title of the page is reset my password. One line, test this and obtain that. I have, for the second line, test count, and I am working with this CSS selector and counting uh, via jQuery, jQuery that there is three elements corresponding to this selector. And then I try, I, I check that the content of this thing match this uh, regular expression. And to finish, I'm clicking somewhere. So three lines, three actions, three tests. What's interesting is that you can be testing something with a jQuery selector and a regups in the other part. And so you get here two of the most expressive languages in one line for one test and nothing else to write. You can describe the more precisely possible what to check. For instance, this is a quite complex CSS selector. Checking that my A uh, tag is the first one in this part of the code. It has an href uh, attribute with the correct URL and it is visible. And in fact, it has the text password. I can check a lot of things in just one line using CSS selectors. And I can check a lot of things in one line using uh, regups to check the content of uh, a tag. So you need to start a website, some browsers, and a big pile of JavaScript. Fortunately, it exists one module that you can install in one line with a um, node package manager, which will be drawing all the um, dependencies. I discovered the module uh, on, on GitHub, trying to do things with Karma uh, and, and testing. Uh, trying, I, I tried to get in touch with the original developer, which did not appear since uh, last uh, 2013. And so I had to continue the development of it and patch it and have it working. And I also added a level of, of complexity on it. So one line and everything is quite working. You still have to configure uh, a bit the process. It's working with, as I shown, Karma. Karma is a framework to make websites and test websites, and it's, uh, it was previously previously called Testacular. 
designed to make tests, and it allows to test Angular uh, websites. And it has been created for this. Uh, it has the capability to launch a web browser on your machine, wait for it to be loaded, open a socket, capture it, and uh, use it as a puppet from outside for your purpose. Most of the magic of what I'm presenting is from Karma. And we are using a bit more code to allow Karma to draw, to, to run tests outside of Angular. We have this module just liberates Karma from Angular. So you have to configure Karma. That's it. To configure Karma, it's quite easy. You have here a file directive in which you can describe the path of the test file you wrote in JavaScript with your suit and tests. Here, I'm just telling that find a test uh, folder and everything under it, you get it. It's the test file you will have to run. It's um, included files. You can have files on the same folder included or excluded. You can also exclude files from your, your tests. You will have to tell which brother to launch and run the tests in. Every browser are supported. Uh, I just suggested three, but Opera will work also, EO will work also, everything works with Karma. And what's interesting is that you can run the test in all the browsers at the same time. You wrote one time the test and it will be automatically checked in all the browsers you want. Then you have to say that you are you will be using Mocha and the famous uh, Karma E2 EDSL. Here we are telling that the URL Karma will be available in the pop-up browser. Browser will be slash Karma and not just slash. It's a lot easier then to have a proxy for your website, your local development service at the slash URL, which could be useful um, if your service needs to be in slash to work, for instance. So here I say that I am connecting my local service to Karma using these files to test in these browsers. That's it. It's boring, but we have to do it. After that, there is lot of things that we can tell or just keep like this. But Karma can uh, capture or not the browser. And if it fails, you can decide uh, when it's timeouts and things like this. When we have done this, it's just to write Karma start and the code uh, is running. But still, we have to write the test. And it was the purpose of this presentation. As I said, in your f JavaScript files, you will have suit blocks with their title and the function block, and test lines. Uh, I presented this kind of tests. Useful, for instance, just why am I counting the form fields in my web page? Because it can happen um, if you're using, for instance, Django, and if you're using somewhere a bit of configuration, uh, it can happen that your login page or your, your registration page not show only the field you decided, but five more, which no one can understand and feel because it's technical stuff which should not be shown. And you are not trying to register at each modification of your code in your website. It's not something that you check at each time. But if you have your um, suite of code with your 10,000 code, at each modification, you can launch them and check if everything goes well. And so at each modification of your code, you can count 
the number of, uh, of, of visible fields in your forms. So I wrote uh, some tests to help uh, doing the majority of what's needed uh, for your test. Load a page, check if something exists, check the value of something, uh, match or not a regex, click on something, submit a form. Uh, the, the wonderful function fail, to be sure it fails here and still works. And the wonderful function pause and resume. We'll come back to pause later. Uh, to build this function, I am relying on an under layer of, of um, an under API, API um, which allows to uh, a thin control of the browser, the windows, uh, with semantic uh, approach for the elements in, in the page and which defines a lot of matches. These are the bricks I used to make these working functions. And you still can use this one to make some dedicated purpose functions. For instance, here. It's the element function I shown two slides ago. And my test is here. If the reg apps I'm building is not what I find as the page title, which is what I am asking for here, just I throw an exception. That's how all the test things function works. And this line can be replaced by this expect element title dot text to match the reg apps in the second level of API, which is just as you've seen, the test page in this level of API, okay? No, not okay. No questions? So when we are floating on top of all this JavaScript complexity, we can start with this little script I made myself uh, from one part the web service I'm using and from the other part karma start which is just uh, in my script here and this is the results you obtain the web browser is started captured all the tests executed there is 1328 1, tests and eight failed that's the result I get in, in my console. When a test fail, I have this time not Chrome but Firefox, I have the name of my, from here to here, the name of my suite, the name of my test, which was counting how many inputs there were in this form, and it should be eight and it failed because it found seven. And what happens when this test failed? I open my test file in JavaScript and I put test pause the line before this test one, this test. And I start back the whole thing with Karma and my web browser will be open, paused, waiting for instructions at the line before the test fail. And I am just here debugging live in the web browser, what happens, why it fails, what goes wrong. I am not just alone with my console on the morning with failed test. I can just see in here what failed with the exact path of uh, the previous tests to, to debug in situ, to debug exactly what goes wrong. Okay. So limitations of these techniques are speed for a main part because running all the layers of JavaScript and in fact the big pile of JavaScript puppeting a web browser which is a huge pile of C code, it's 
slow on the machines, um, especially because it's easy to write a lot, a lot, and a lot of text tests, and it's what you want to write the maximum possible tests to be sure that everything goes well. And so there are some choice to make when decided when deciding what to test and what not to test. Uh, if you just want to test anything, you won't never <laughs> um, finish your test writing and you won't ever add the results because it's too slow. Uh, and what I am applying is this, uh, does the product does what I want uh, and does anything that ever have been reported false uh, become false again or uh, kept clear because customer can look at it after. Another limitation which is not uh, on this slide is um, some kind of interactions. In fact, you can't click on, uh, I don't know how to click on an alert or, uh, or a confirmed dialog in JavaScript from your web browser when you are in JavaScript. Uh, just because uh, when an alert dialog arrives, every uh, process in JavaScript is stopped waiting for the user to click. Uh, and so I am looking at some uh, Xol extensions for Firefox may be able to click uh, to emulate the mouse on the other level. But currently, with this method, I don't know how to click on an alert dialog when it comes. But alert and confirm dialogs are bad in vanilla JavaScript. Use alternatives one from uh, your libraries, which uh, will be smart enough not to stop all your browser when popping up, for instance. So if you don't have this bad habit, you will be safe. Okay, any questions? Was it too complicated? I, I know I lost half of you at the configuration of Karma, but it was just two slides, the rest was with colors and... You were talking about the Angular application? Yes. What's wonderful with this tool is that you can test everything, everything that your web browser can show. Uh, that's what that's what I was expecting uh, when when picking this technology. I uh, spoke about Angular because Karma has been originally developed to be the test uh, framework for Angular websites, but with the module, uh, with this module. The only one you have to install, this one, um, you can use all the power of camera in any web browser for any website with no requirements else. You just write your test with one light by test, start camera, and everything goes right. Quite interesting, no? Yes. You will choose a, a stack like uh, Selenium, or, or the, you you do not use a stack uh, software, uh, a web driver for the for the browser like uh, Selenium. Uh, you inject the JavaScript to the page and control uh, the, the the browser with with Karma uh, JavaScript. Yes, exactly. I'm controlling the actual web page served by your service. And in fact, here you have Mocha. Mocha is the test driver working with, uh, with JavaScript and he's working in the browser. Did I spoke a real English? Yes? Okay. Um. I use some um, uh, 
some other tool to, 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 to do end-to-end -end testing, like Nightwatch ES, who use uh, Selenium for, for control uh, browser. Uh, what, do you have some limitations? Can you compare your, your, your way to inject JavaScript before uh, launching uh, another tool with, uh, with, with a web driver to control the browser? No. <laughs> it would be very interesting, but I can't do this. Not, not just now. <laughs> Just this this works. It's quite slow, as I as I said. But if you have five minutes, you can run a lot of tests. Slow so also. And the real limitation I went through uh, in month of using this for many websites is, okay, it was a confirmed dialogue. So I had to develop the submit. The test submit is submit the form without clicking on and popping up the confirmed dialogue because I won't be able to click on. That's quite a limitation still. Yes, I assume you have to speak in. As you're relying on browsers to do your tests, uh, I suspect you can't integrate uh, Karma uh, in a continuous, continuous uh, integration process. Can you, can you do this? On a web server? Oh, uh, it's on a server. For um, continuous integration, it, it can be automated. As you've seen, uh, everything starts at Karma Start. And you can, you can configure Karma not to have it in a single run. Like here, I selected single run. And if you say false here, Karma will stay alive and redo redo all the tests at each uh, modification, which is uh, for um, a local desktop uh, kind of continuous integration. Else, you just start your start your script at each commit and get the results by by mail or thing like this. <laughs> if ever you may if you put false here, that's what it will be. <laughs> uh, it's working like middleman, for instance, a framework for for static websites, uh, which is more interesting uh, because you still uh, you, you you it's sure you have to to press F5 to check it. Okay, who will be using it? Tomorrow? <laughs> okay.